Welcome to Magic Spiral. I'm Landon Balk. As a fan of recording technology, I was really curious about what it was like to work with the digital tape recording formats, so I jumped on the opportunity to obtain three Tascam DA38 digital tape recording machines. What I had discovered online were previous owners only too happy to leave these digital tape recording machines behind and convert to computer-based recording. So what we're going to do today is record with the DA38s and see if working with digital tape is really that bad. In the early 90s, there were a few digital tape formats introduced onto the recording market that helped spawn the Project Studio revolution, because these machines were able to record audio at CD quality or better. The Alesis ADAT, which can record 8 tracks onto Super VHS tapes. ADAT would later become a way to transfer 8 digital audio tracks through a fiber optic cable, and these are currently being used on audio interfaces. Sony's DAT, which was their own proprietary tapes that failed as an album release format, but became favored as a mastering medium for recording artists. We also have Tascam's DTRS format, which records 8 tracks onto Hi8 cassettes. This brings us to the DA38, which happens to be the younger brother of the Emmy-winning DA88. The digital tape recording formats were quite the norm in professional and project studios throughout the 90s and early 2000s, also popular in the film and television worlds. These systems were reasonably obtainable, but still expensive to the average consumer. The list price for a single DA38 was $3,499. It's quite astounding considering that these machines go for about one to three hundred dollars a piece now. It's not that they weren't built well, so why the major depreciation in value? Let's take a look. On the front panel of the DA38 we can see our familiar transport controls, a variety of function buttons, LED meters, and a loading door for the Hi8 tapes. I'd say this is a good looking machine. On the back, we have balanced DB25 in and outputs along with unbalanced RCA. We have word clock and a TDIF digital I.O. Connections for remote controllers and for syncing multiple machines together. We have two remotes that we can use. The RC808, which handles basic transport and recording controls, and the RC848. This is more of a master remote, and it feels solid. The buttons are satisfying, and this thing looks somewhere in between a space shuttle controller and a fax machine. It's very tactile. It's too bad there isn't much like this for computer software controllers. This is just great. So what can this bad boy do? We have an 8-track recorder that records 16-bit linear PCM data onto Hi8 tapes at 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. A two-hour tape is roughly an hour and 48 minutes of audio recording time. You can sync up to 16 DA38s together for a total of 128 tracks. I wonder if anybody has done that. On to the Hi8 tapes. The manual recommends MP tapes no longer than 120 minutes. Seems fair enough. Here's the kicker though. We have to format the tapes in real time. To be fair, you can simultaneously record while you format, but you'd better have formatted tapes handy if you want to be prepared for your sessions. Let's format a new tape. Press Format and press again and choose the sample rate. Now press Record. This is like formatting any disk drive, you do not want to interrupt the process. A 120 minute tape will take nearly two hours to format. Now's a good time to write or rehearse or call your mom. I know mom, I love you too. Okay, the tape reads zero and we're ready to record. Let's review the back panel for input and output setup. We have RCA and DB25. If you have a mixer like this one, you can just use the DP25 cables to come in and out of the mixer like I have here. Alternatively, an RCA to quarter inch snake would work as long as your mixer has 8 ins and 8 outs. I have everything hooked up to my mixer and I'm ready to set the levels. This is a digital format so I want to steer clear of overloading the signal. 
Once we have good levels, we can create a marker for the endpoint so we can locate the beginning of the song. Let's arm the tracks we want to record, and now it's as simple as pressing record and play. Magic. This is all fine and dandy for linear recordings, but what if we want to punch in or make edits? In this case, we have rehearsal points and punch in out points that we can utilize. This works in a very traditional way. Most tape machines have a counter or digitally controlled memory or location points that are used to help navigate around the tape. We are also able to copy tracks without losing any information. This is basically how editing is done with digital tape. There isn't any way to splice digital tape, so you would use multiple machines to create a composite of multiple takes by copying the tracks. It is a process, but we have the benefit of digital precision when punching in edits, instead of editing tape with a razor blade. Let's cut some tracks. I've got a sequence from my MIDI hardware, which is all plugged into this mixer. Now I can assign whatever tracks I want the instruments recorded to. We have our formatted blank tape that's rewound to the beginning. I want to leave 7 and 8 open to record a guitar and bass. Now I'll arm the tracks and set the levels. We'll press record and play on the deck and allow a few moments to pass on the tape. And now the performance begins. So if I screw up, I can do one of two things. Keep the tape rolling and do takes, or rewind it back to the top and try again. I'll rewind and try again. Alright, that performance was pretty good. Let's ready the bass guitar on track 7. I'll rewind the tape and hit record. Maybe I messed up halfway through and I want to punch in. I can set the locator point or use a foot switch to punch in manually. If you want precision, there's this shuttle wheel where we can scrub to find an exact spot and create an automatic punch in point. The time code is written onto the tape, so every time we put the tape in, the exact time locations will always be the same, whereas analog tape can drift from the counter. You can see how the remote comes in handy here. Alright, now the same thing for the guitar on track 8. Here's maybe where I'd like to utilize a cool feature. Just like analog tape, we can use a very speed. This means I can speed up or slow the tape down, which will affect the pitch. Okay, so we have two stereo drum tracks on 1, 2, and 3, 4, synthesizers on 5, 6, a bass on 7, and a guitar on 8. But what if we want to add more tracks? Well, we can get a computer. Or we can simply sync multiple machines together. Recording will work the same, but each machine needs to be assigned an ID so it knows which tracks they are. ID 1 is tracks 1 through 8, ID 2 is tracks 9 through 16, and so on. We also need blank formatted tapes in each machine. This is where the RC848 becomes an essential accessory. I'm not going to go too deep into syncing these machines, but you can probably imagine that it would be handy to at least have two of them sync together. Now we have our 8 tracks recorded and we need somewhere to mix to. 
The DA38s don't have SPDIF outputs without an external interface format converter. This would enable us to record the individual tracks into a computer. This is where ADAT still holds its relevance in today's computer world. We can essentially record to any source we can connect to with the DB25 or RCA outputs. An audio interface, a CD burner, a tape machine. I'm just going to bounce the stereo mix to this field recorder from the mixer. Because these tracks aren't separated in a computer, we have to utilize the mixer and do everything in real time. Let's set it up and go. Now that we've finished our session, we have to consider all of the moving parts inside of what's essentially a digital audio VCR. We have heads to keep clean, also there's a lot of mechanical moving parts that can go wrong. The upside is these machines are relatively affordable and easy to find these days. Their proprietary cables and accessories might not be so accessible. So what do I think? Is it worth having in the studio? If Fidelity were a priority, I could find use for these machines. Granted, I didn't want to work within a computer, and if there was outboard gear specifically that I wanted to utilize. These machines are kind of clunky and cool, but don't add any character to the recordings like analog tape does. For what it's worth, I prefer the benefits of analog tape if I'm going to have the drawbacks of maintaining a physical system. It is fascinating technology, and a lot of engineering went into these machines. If you come across one, don't be afraid to pick it up and experiment with it yourself. Many recordings you've heard utilized digital tape machines much like this DA38, though I suppose they are presently being used for archiving. Digital tape may be an obsolete recording medium, but it's an interesting step in the evolution of recording technology. It's been a fascinating pleasure working with the DA38, and I hope you've enjoyed this trip with me. I'm Landon with Magic Spiral Productions, and happy recording.